Hello and welcome to the Borough Breakdown podcast, the opposition show. On this episode, I'm joined by Benjamin Bloom to talk all things Ipswich ahead of Borough's first visit to Portman Road since 2018. Now, Ben, thanks for joining me again on the show. Uh, Football aside, firstly, how are you? I was fine. And then you mentioned 2018 and it just brought back a (laughs) Horrible, horrible memory. I was at that game. And if you ever want to see the worst piece of pressing from one of the worst teams in championship history, who was the who was the lad you had in central midfield who just walked through and scored in that game? And Bessage. God bless. It wasn't, sorry? Mohamed Besic. Besic, that's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. God bless Tony Pulis, who got 2 0 up in that game and really went, okay. Well done, lads. Clean sheet, please, and we'll go. We'll go home with three points because you could have won about twelve nil that night. But yeah, other than that, I'm absolutely fine. I'm a bit delirious, as you can probably tell. This end of the season is not good for the not good for the kind of equilibrium, Dana. But you're gonna you're gonna ground me nicely, aren't you? Well, actually, I was going to talk about that. You know, Ipswich being second in the table um, on goal difference, four games to go. How are the nerves? You know, bringing football into it. How are you? How are you feeling about that? Your team are are, are almost there, but also no one seems to want to to go up at the moment. It's weird. Well, people say nice things to me, Dana. They say, oh, Ben, you're so balanced. You do you do such a good job of keeping your emotions in check. I'm pathetic. I've gone. My head's completely gone. <laughs> East Anglian Derby the other day, and I couldn't get a ticket. And I was actually struggling to, to watch it. And, you know, the choice between, shall I just not even watch this? It's too stressful. Last night, <laughs> I was at Portman Road for Ipswich v Watford. And it's supposed to be fun, isn't it? And for the first half, for the most part, I'm okay. But, and if this game is in September and you're at 60 minutes and you're nil-nil with Watford, who cares? You know, fine, just watch the game, enjoy the game. But, like, this just cold chill came over the, like the White Walkers in Game of Thrones or whatever, just comes (laughs) over the stadium at 60 minutes and everyone just goes into this heightened state of anxiety and nerves because you know... Right. If we score, it's massive. If we concede, it's massive. And I don't know if you've seen the clip, Dana. We got to the end of stoppage time, 95 minutes, and Ed Okayembe of Watford just hoofed the ball from the halfway line. And you're kind of looking at the corner of your eye and you're tracking the ball and you're like, oh, my God, he's going to David Beckham this with the last kick of the game. <laughs> and Hlacky is running by and he flies and palms it out and you're like, we could have just lost it. Imagine losing that game to that goal and what the mm. Leeds and Leicester fans would have made of. So my head is completely gone already, which might be good uh, when we talk about the three-game week, which you've got to play to round out this season. Yeah, I kind of want to touch upon, because I've heard outsiders mention this, that oh, Ipswich fans will be fine with you know, wherever they finish because of, I guess, the context of where they've found themselves this season, recently promoted back to the Championship. But you are so close to top spot, considering how far away Leicester were. They were running away with it at a point, and to a degree, I guess, have kind of not bottled it, but they've definitely... I, I can't think of another synonym, to be honest. I'm just going to say that. So, like, <laughs> would you would you be happy with a playoff place or not? It's one of those questions where the answer's not binary, isn't it? It, it would mm. be, in the big picture, it would, it would be amazing what Ipswich have done from 11th in League One or whatever to then second in League One to wherever it is. And let's be honest, it's probably going to be the top three unless we get Southampton just go mental in the last, you know, just win every game and beat Leicester and Leeds in the running. So big picture, yeah, a, you know, if we'd spoke at the start of the season and you said, Ben, I guarantee your playoffs. Yeah, you can't finish. You can't finish second, but I guarantee your playoffs. I'm not arguing with you about that, am I? I'm just taking yeah. playoffs. So, um, but then, you, of course, you're totally right. You look at it and sometimes in football, there's these sliding doors moments, aren't there, where you and do we want to be sat here in five, ten years time going, 
Oh, God. Remember that run in in 23 24, <laughs> where if Ipswich had just not conceded that 94th minute goal to Middlesbrough and lost at Portman Road, that was the day. That was the day. And then Kieran McKenna left and they sold all their players and got relegated next. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You don't want yeah. it to be. You don't want it to be that, but yeah, so so close. And but of course, it whatever they do, it's been it's been an incredible rise from League One. Yeah, how have Ipswich been performing lately? Then not very well um, in Ooh. terms of you know the eye test. Um, mm. I I went on a thing with uh, some Watford fans in December when Ipswich Ipswich won at Watford and went top for the day. And I said to them, for the last 12 months, any coin flip game, any 50-50 game, any game where if I if I said, Dana, here are the stats, I'm not telling you the score. Guess who won? And you'd like, oh, I can't call that. Any one of those games, Ipswich, they just won it. Do you know what I mean? They, they were just like a winning machine. And um, it's less like that now. I know your listeners are going to be going, what is he talking about? They've won eight and ten <laughs> or something. but." Um, I don't know if you caught the game against Blackburn. That was in the four games on um, Good Friday. They were they won one nil, clinging on for grim death for the last thirty minutes. <laughs> the Southampton game, they won three two Ipswich in the ninety seventh minute, and from minute twenty to minute sixty, Southampton completely dominant, absolutely mm. dominant. So, watch, then, oh yeah, watch that one. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah, I would say so, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the last two games, no goals. It has turned, you know. And like the coin flip game against Watford, Keith Moore's header goes in or Broadhead's shot hits the post and goes in and doesn't hit the post and go across the line. So the eye test says there's been a few um, iffy moments. But, I mean, my God, all this great... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven... 12 games, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine wins in 12. So the points tally is um, sensational, but we're getting to the point now where I know, I know you're a stats girl and you track things and look at trends and whatnot, but you get to the point now where it's just, okay, that's all lovely information, but can you score the same amount of points for that Leeds do over the next yeah. four games? Do you know what I mean? It gets... Yeah. That simple. The context is so crystal clear. Why do you think it is then that you've maybe suffered a little bit of a dip in performance levels recently? Um, slight regression to the mean. I mean, they're overperforming yeah. by anybody's um, anybody's eyes, aren't they? Um, nerves. But Leicester's year one parachute players were nervous at Millwall on Wednesday and <laughs> uh, Tuesday, excuse me, and so were, so were Leeds. And Leeds have got young players as well in that squad as well. Um, it's got to be tiredness as well, hasn't it? I don't know how you feel about head, uh, back-to-back Good Friday, Easter Monday, three-game week after it. You feel, come on, go Saturday, Saturday, and then three-game mm-hmm. week after that. But I think a lot of fans have been telling me this midweek round, a lot of knackered players and, you know, just trying a lot of these teachers at school trying to get to the end of term and they're just like zombie in it <laughs> running up the travelator on gladiators <laughs> you know just trying to claw their way over the line so all of those things and I mean I know you've watched Borough in uh, you know promotion races and and getting over the line just the mental um the mental side of just getting it done and Daniel Farker said in his Leeds press conference that when he went up with Norwich, they were pretty much there. And then they went draw, 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 draw in four of the last six games. And it's just just when it's there um, and you can touch it. And that was the case for Norwich then. But, it, you know, it's anyone's this season. So I think it's just the magnitude of things and, you know, just the nature of the fact that there's no margin for error because you've got three teams within a point of each other either. It is fascinating as someone that isn't, involved in it in the capacity of supporting any of those teams but talk to me about January because four players came in Kiefer Moore, Ali Alhamadi, Lewis Travis and, and Jeremy Samiento. Are you happy with that business? Are you happy with the impact that that and those players have had on Ipswich's season? 
Yeah, I mean, it would have been amazing if you were bringing in Kiefer Moore and George Hurst was going to be fit. In a parallel universe, George Hurst doesn't get hurt against Leicester on Boxing Day. Do they get Kiefer Moore then? I'd love to think that they would and you'd have both of those lads playing for the one position. Um, Travis hasn't played too much, um, but he's an experienced head around the squad, isn't he? Sarmiento is, I think if you score... Uh, late equalising goal at Leicester to draw 1-1 and the winning goal in that ridiculous Southampton game, I think you've you ticked off as a as a good um a good loan signing as well. Al Hamadi's been fun, but he's coming up from League Two day. Now how hard is that mm-hmm. to go from AFC Wimbledon to, you know, you're coming in not just to the championship, you're not coming to um I mean imagine he came to Middlesbrough and they're in the middle of the yeah. table and there's still a playoff chance and you've got fit strikers ahead and you can do 15 minutes at the end of every game and ease in in a you know in a less high pressure situation so yeah I think I think it was a good window it'd just be fascinating to know whether they would have signed more if Hurst was was going to have been available I wonder I wonder whether they would or not but we won't we'll never know yeah, it's an interesting point on Al Hamadi. He was somebody that, you know, we were discussing on board a breakdown of who could we maybe look at in in January. And I was surprised in a way that he took such a, a jump up from League Two to the top end of, of the championship, like the very top of the championship. So I think that's quite interesting. Who are the players that Borough fans should maybe look out for on Saturday then? Has it changed from previously? Well, injuries have kind of helped uh, well not helped there have they yeah I mean we're talking about a team who are simultaneously the top scorers in the division but haven't <laughs> scored a goal for two games so mm. I, I don't know what the hell you make of that I mean obviously the the obvious ones that Borough fans will know already without me telling them will be Leif Davis um, who's got absurd numbers from left back and you got this nice lopsided team set up to get him excessively high up on the on the um left wing from left fullback. He's a brilliant player. Um it's always fun with Kladke in goal. There's <laughs> always something. He's either going to make a brilliant save, you know, he's playing out from the back and pinging the ball about, or he's coming for a cross and missing it, or was his starting but so he's a very um noteworthy player. I mean Sam Morsey is unrecognizable from when he was with you guys. He's Running around like obviously, uh, I it's the yeah. borough way, it's the borough way, Ben. It's the borough way. I'd like to think it's the Kieran McKenna way, and he's just you know <laughs> transformed him, but it probably uh, is as well, to be fair. But what would you say if I told you at the start of the season, most influential player in one of the teams vying for the um, you know. Automatic. Let's let's say how it is. But they're, they're vying for the title. The Ipswich could win the championship yeah. title. As ridiculous as that sounds, um, you know, deep line playmaker. You're not going to say it's Sam Morsey, are you? No, and it's funny because I feel like we could do with somebody in that mould. Because I think at times this season we've been a little bit passive, a little bit inactive against the ball and when teams are pressing on us we need to put it bluntly a little bit of a shit house in midfield I think we're a little bit too nice so we could do with Sam Horsey to be fair but he's more than that now as well he is he is a like a deep line yeah. playmaker as as well and I, I just never saw that at Wigan and at Borough and you know wherever else Morsey has been wherever else Paul Cook was at the at the time <laughs> I think but um yeah, what's really interesting is that look, they're not firing um, in terms of goals in the last two games. Wes Burns is not available. Um, so you've got Connor Chaplin didn't start the last game at number 10. And I think he's he's either joint top scorer with Broadhead or he's or he's one behind. So you'd imagine he'd start if he didn't start. And then, you know, will Broadhead start or will where will Amari Hutchinson be pitched? Is he going to continue to cover for Wes Burns down the right-hand side? Will Sarmiento finally get a start? I don't know. He doesn't really fancy him. So, because it feels like in in McKenna's um, sort of game plan, that's where the goals come from, the row of three off the front in the 4-2-3-1. So, that's key. If they don't turn up, and I know you guys have got a red-hot striker at the moment, you know, if they don't turn up, then problems. What are the weaknesses that Borough could potentially target then on Saturday? Um, 
I will address the 52 goals conceded um, column, Dana, <laughs> uh, quite quickly, which is uh, Burr have conceded 55. So, you know, if, if Burr are cracking three goals, it'll be it'll be level. Um, but yeah, we just massively open. Kieran McKenna would point out that we had a clean sheet against Blackburn, a clean sheet against Sheffield Wednesday, um, and a clean sheet against Watford. So we've actually got one, two, three in sort of five games, which is rare for us. But Ipswich Town are a very, very open football team. And if we see any of the vertical passing and brilliant attacking we saw maybe last season from Borough, less this season, then there's there's goals, isn't there? And um, I've already mentioned Latte Lath, who looks really at it, doesn't he? So, um, yeah, it's just being massively open. Everybody knows... You know, every analyst, even the likes of you and me know, Leif Davis is going to be up here. If there's a quick switch on into that channel, you know, that's where the that's where the space is. And um, it's how do you press and how do you counter? And uh, teams that have got that right and done that well have scored lots of goals at Ipswich and particularly at Portman Road as well. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned about Leif Davis because I was kind of getting parallels to Ryan Giles last season at Borough because it was exactly the same, that he would be so advanced up the pitch and then we'd get caught in that space behind. So I think Leif Davis against Isaiah Jones could be a pretty interesting <laughs> battle. I, I mean, you are pulling a face there, but to be fair, Jones, not the same player under what, uh, as what we saw under Wilder. And to be fair, I he know, but Dana, so quick and so direct. And if it's a counter yeah. attack then that's a that's a good matchup mm. um if you're able to manipulate those situations i really hope that we can because i like us counter attack and i think it really suits us we scored a brilliant counter attack goal against hull and that's the sort of situations that i really want to see more from so maybe we could see it against Ipswich but I was looking into the stats and and Ben talk to you about, talk to me about this 19 games are beaten at, at Portman Road you haven't lost there since late August against Leeds a rather boring 4-3 defeat <laughs> um <laughs> do you think you'll keep that unbeaten run up on Saturday when Borough come to Portman Road I've got absolutely no idea. I told you my head's gone at the start of the show, Dana. Um, I mean, it's a hell of a run, isn't it? And to be fair, in that Leeds game, they just got... That was the first time anyone had seen... Who did Leeds play up top? Nonto returned. Sinistera played before he got sold to Bournemouth. Uh, Piru made his debut. Who else? They had a ridiculous front four. Uh, Ruta. They like had an mm. 80 million euro front four or something. They just blew us away. But... Still got most of those players, haven't they? I'm avoiding your question, aren't I? Um, <laughs> it just a lot, so much of it depends on on Borough and what intensity they can they can bring, and whether the flip flops are either in the locker, are they by the deck chair, are they just ready, are they by the side of the pool, are they ready to mm. slip their feet into the flip flops, or you know, can Carrick say, yeah, you know? Can you post 10 points from the last four games? Can you get to 72 and see see where you're at? Can you get a horrible finish for Norwich and get in there? I'm I'm <laughs> sensing from your body language, you, you think that unlikely and maybe the flip-flops are going to be on fairly soon. So if we get a lack of intensity from Borough, then, you know, Ipswich, Ipswich will win because it's so much more important. But... If we get a freedom from Borough and a really bloody nervous Portman Road and Ipswich, then you'd love to play that if you're if you're thin as as or I say Jones, like you say, or Latte Laugh. You're like, oh, this is my this is my scene. I've got I've got my spanner here uh, and I'm about <laughs> to throw it in the works of your promotion push. So it's so on a knife edge with the psychology at this point in the season, isn't it? Yeah, I think the start of this game is going to be really interesting because I think Carrick was really he came out and he was pretty defiant after the game against Hull in saying that it's not over yet, that, yeah, OK, we've maybe slumped an opportunity there to to cut the gap to Norwich to four points. But at the same time, like we're still in it and and we are technically, although I've, I always thought that it was unlikely. And with that draw, it does burst the, the bubble a little bit. But we are still there as delusion as delusional as that may sound we definitely are still in it so i think the start of this game is going to be interesting do you want to have a guess of what the score's going to be uh, come full time 
I mean, both teams to score nailed on, isn't it? If it's Ipswich at home this season. Yeah. I went, I either went 2 1 or 3 1 in predictions. But as I say, my my head has gone. We uh, we spoke about it last time, Dana. We always like Carrick versus McKenna, and they didn't fall over each other trying to be overly clever and beat each other last time. So we should get a good, you know, open football match. I totally agree with you that um, in terms of that first goal, if Ipswich score it, I think, uh, speaking of deck chairs, do we get a Middlesbrough fold? Because it's like, oh, OK, we're, we're, yeah. we're done at this point. And, um, you know, Norwich will do well to mess up to that extent. If you get Middlesbrough opening goal and you know Ipswich have got a chase, then you could get 3-2, 4-3 any particular yeah. way. So um, I would think both teams to score. What? Um, uh, who are Borough going to line up in the attacking slots? It'll be it'll definitely be Latilath, uh, Jones on the right, and then it'll probably be Greenwood on the left because, uh, and then as as in the number ten because Riley McGree's ruled out for the rest of the season, so that's probably what we're working with. Uh. As 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 was good for he's got history with Plymouth against um, Ipswich as well from last season. Oh, nice! When you say you know when you say those guys' names, then you you think Borough are more than capable of scoring in the game. Um, it, it's almost just a a microcosm this game for the narrative of our Ipswich going up or not because if Ipswich are going up to win the game, I don't know if you've seen how the schedule works, whereby Leeds basically now play three times. For this next game for Ipswich, they play because Coventry are in the um, cup semi final and then Leeds play Friday night ahead. So pressure is going to be so, so on Ipswich, whatever happens going into a three game week to end the season. Hull away, Coventry away, Huddersfield at home potentially playing to stay up. It's, oh, if you think my head's gone now. Uh, so basically, there's no option. You have to win this game to set yourself up to come into that last horrific week with, you know, and you want to go into that last week, Dana, knowing, right, seven points, Premier League, or something something like that. You just want to know that. That's the deal. Black and white. Score those points and you're, you're up. You'd rather it wasn't nine, but, you know, um, as everyone very boringly says, there'll still be more twists and turns, won't there? And <laughs> someone... Classic commentator's cliche, that, isn't it? But it is. and But sometimes they're cliches because they're true. And is someone yeah. going to just drop? And I always remember when Ipswich failed to get promoted, I can't remember what year it was, like three games from the end of the season, they lost at home to Crew, And I think Crew got <laughs> relegated that season or maybe just stayed up. Or something. And it was just the most ridiculous, most championship result you could ever see. But is there going to be... I, I don't know. I don't know Leicester have got or, or Leeds that you get like some ridiculous home defeat coming from someone. That's what exactly what I was thinking while she were talking there. Whenever we approach this this part of the season, coming towards the close of it, there is always one result that stands out amongst all the others. And I look at it and I think WTF. And Borough, I don't think I've ever been on the end of that um, and I don't think they've been the the kind of team that inflict that on a on an opposition but yeah I do f I, I am feeling like we might and it might be on the Saturday but I I honestly couldn't call can it for three borough can I tell you the prime contender Ipswich v Huddersfield last last day of the season yeah. do you know mm. what I mean hell yeah from a Sorba Thomas set play I can all oh I it's can written almost... Put a stop it's it, yeah. Written. But it's I just had not having a look at Leeds fixtures. I didn't realise Borough play Leeds as as well yeah, in running. Monday, on a on a Monday night, which is great. We all love a Monday night game. Thanks, Sky. So I really need to big Borough up here. They're an excellent team, and they're going to take Leeds all the way in that game, whilst not <laughs> taking Ipswich all the way in this game. Right? That's my football supporter logic. Yeah. I do feel like we might end up winning against one of those two teams, either yourselves or Leeds. I bet you're hoping that it's against Leeds, obviously. <laughs> Man, you just uh, you just want any help from anywhere you can you can get, especially after this midweek. Um, because I mean I don't know what your take is um 
you know, from your vantage point from Borough. But less Millwall won Leicester nil, Leeds nil, Sunderland nil, Ipswich nil, Watford nil. I, maybe it's just that our expectations are unreasonably high, given that these teams have just been winning all season. But maybe that's maybe that's our bonkers round, and we'll get, you know, nine or ten points from the last four games from all of these sides now. Yeah, it is going to be very interesting indeed. But to those that are listening to this and watching as well, please let us know what your score predictions are for Ipswich against the Borough. And we'll put all the links to where you can find Ben's content in the description of this episode. But that was all of your opposition match day chat in a pod. We'll be back on Sunday discussing what we hope to be a Borough win. I know Ben doesn't, but that was it for today of the Borough Breakdown.